to the next episode of the RC Flight School. This is episode two. And on this one, we're going to continue with the ground school. If you remember from episode one, we talked about um, some of the major pieces of the aircraft. We talked about how lift is generated. And we talked about the importance of center of gravity. So as a review, uh, we're going to kind of start with some of the pieces and parts of the aircraft here that are going to be related to episode two. And for that, we're going to talk about the, uh, the wings and have the ailerons installed. The ailerons are at the outer surface here. You can see, and this is the movable piece that is on the outer of the wing here. These go up and down. They don't go up and down together. Mm -hmm. if, you, if they do, you got a major problem. They go one up, one down, one up, one down. They move like this, okay? And we're gonna talk a little bit more detail on that, but it is, that's what the ailerons do. They're mounted on the outside of the wing. Moving back, we have the, the rudder, which is mounted on the, out, on the vertical stabilator. The rudder is this back piece here, and it's like a rudder of a ship, right? How does a rudder on a boat work? Well, you turn the rudder and it moves the boat. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. It moves in what we call yaw. Yaw is what the rudder does. And then we have the elevator. It is located on the back here on the uh, horizontal stabilator. And the elevator is what does pitch. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on that because that's obviously the very basics of it. But now you at least know what the pieces are we're going to talk about. So the very first one is, lo is the control surfaces that are mounted on the wings. And those are called... The, the, I'm sorry, um, the ailerons. The ailerons, that's right. They're, but they're called the ailerons. And the ailerons are mounted on the wing, of course. And what they do is they do roll, right? So mm -hmm. move this aircraft. This thing's pretty big to be yeah, moving around between the two of us, right? So roll. Um, this is this pit, this motion here, right? This is what we consider roll or bank. Mm -hmm. That's You can call it bank. So if you're in a turn like this, we usually consider that uh, a bank angle. And uh, what those do is the um, the aileron, um, so let's say we want to go into this type of an angle. We want to go into a bank like this, right? So uh, what happens is, is that the aileron on this side actually moves in the down position. So it goes down, and what you're doing is you're actually creating um, more camber of the wing. And if you remember from episode one, mm -hmm. the higher the amount of camber, the more lift it's going to produce. So by lowering the aileron down, you are effectively making the wing more curved, which is producing more lift, which is going to do what? Lift it up on this end. On the same time, that side over there is going to actually pitch up and is going to make less lift. The aileron is actually going to become more like a spoiler. It's going to spoil the lift. And by doing that, it's going to drop down. So in combination, when your ailerons move, so if it wants to go like this, the aileron on this side goes down because it needs to produce more lift. And the wing that is going down, the aileron is actually gonna go in the up position and produce left, less lift. So it's a little bit opposite of uh, kind of what you would uh, think. So moving on, um, next we're gonna talk about the, uh, the rudder because really to do a turn properly in an aircraft, um, you're gonna to wanna to use the rudder and the ailerons together. That's called a coordinated turn because what's gonna happen is, is that you want to, as the aircraft begins its, its bank, you're going to want to um, add a little bit of rudder at the same time. So you bank the aircraft and then you yaw the aircraft. So you're kind of mm -hmm. like, you're kind of slipping the airplane, you're kind of, it's moving two things at once. And it takes a lot for people to understand how to, how to make that happen. You will be a better pilot learning from the beginning to add a little bit of aileron and a little bit of rudder, do them together. So if you wanna, if you're gonna be moving in a right turn, you're gonna move the, the, the uh, aileron stick to the right. You're gonna move a little bit of the rudder to the right and that is gonna make a coordinated turn. And that's a proper way to turn the airplane. Now, if you were in a real airplane, mm -hmm. there's a little indicator. It's got a little, it's got a bank, it's got a little silhouette of the airplane, it's got a little ball at the bottom, right? Yeah. And what you wanna do is you wanna use the aileron and the rudder together to bank the airplane and keep that little ball centered. Well, you don't have that in an RC plane. Uh, this, little, this little dude sitting in here, he has a bunch of stickers in front that look like gauges, but they don't actually work. And you're not sitting in there and that dude is not gonna tell you. So you're gonna have to look at the airplane 
and try to imagine how it is flying through the air and coordinate your aileron and rudder together. It's not critical really to do that in the beginning. You just want to get the airplane up in the air, get it back down again, but you'll be a far better pilot if you can learn from the very beginning to coordinate a little bit of rudder, a little bit of aileron, and then back the other way. And you'll be much better at flying. Otherwise, the rudder really doesn't get used that much in normal flying, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. unless you have a crosswind that's kind of coming across here and the airplane is drifting one way or the other, for the most part, you don't use a lot of, of rudder, at least to get started. So for basic training, you don't need to use the rudder much. But if you are going into a turn, you're going to want to use the rudder and the aileron together. So just kind of get used to the fact that they will, your thumbs will kind of move together mm -hmm. in both directions. Now, if you want to get the airplane to climb, descend, or pitch up, pitch down, when we talk about pitch, we talk about pitching up, and we talk about pitching down. And for that, you're going to want to use what's back here, and that's known as the, the elevator. And what the elevator is doing is it's, it's like a miniature wing back here on the, on the horizontal stabulator. And so if you want to put the airplane up in the nose, you need to have less lift. So if you want the airplane to fly like that, you need less lift back here. When you pull back on the elevator stick, what it's doing is it's going to lift the elevator up and it's actually going to start to spoil the lift, mm -hmm. which is now going to produce less lift. It's going to, rear end's going to sag down and the nose is going to come up. If you want the airplane to do the opposite, which is go down like this, um, you're going to want to push the elevator for, or push the stick forward. The elevator goes down, mm -hmm. which produces it makes more camber, and more camber makes what? Makes more camber makes more altitude. lift. Yeah, lift makes more lift. So just like the aileron, you you're kind of extending the wing out and making that camber greater. You're producing more lift. Just like aileron, the elevator works the same way. Actually, the rudder works the same way, mm -hmm. too. It's just a little bit tougher to visualize, but that's that's what it's doing. You're you're kind of directing the airflow mm -hmm. by changing the shape of the uh, the control surface. So yeah, that those are the, the main um, pieces of parts that actually control the aircraft. The only one we didn't touch on yet is throttle, but throttle is a little bit easier to understand. Throttle is what makes the thrust, mm -hmm. which overcomes the drag and produces lift when you get going fast enough with the wings. But thrust in this one, in throttle, is um, done by an EDF unit located in the tail here. It's a prop on a prop plane. It's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You push the throttle forward, it goes faster. You pull it back, it goes slower. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to understand. Uh, ailerons, rudder, and elevator are a little bit more difficult. So in review, um, that's, hold on one second, we're gonna grab a little bit smaller an airplane that's easier to... All right, so using our little P-51 Mustang here, um, if um, I wanted to take the airplane and I wanted to roll it like this, what control surface would I have to, to yeah, use? You'd have to use the ailerons. Yep, I wanna use the ailerons. And if I'm gonna be going like this and I wanna turn kind of at the same time, you're going to be using what to, well actually there are three surfaces you're going to be using for that, but in order to make a coordinated turn, um, which which ones are you going to use? The ailerons and the rudder. Yep. Uh, and then the third one of that is actually going to be the elevator. We didn't really talk about that much in, in mm -hmm. fact of turning, but as the airplane begins to bank and kind of begins to make its uh, turn, you can actually use the elevator to kind of make it a tighter turn or a shallower turn uh, by using the elevator and rudder. So you're actually gonna be using all three services at the same time. But typically, a, when we talk about a coordinated turn, you're kind of talking about those things all together. You can't forget about the rudder. Mm -hmm. um, usually what they say when they call a yank and bank turn means you're gonna yank the, you're gonna take the aileron, you're gonna go like this and you're gonna bank it and I'm gonna mm -hmm. pull back on the elevator and I'm gonna make it do this. Well, you can do that. It's called a yank and bank turn. It's not very scale correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, it works. But if you really want to learn how to do it right, you're going to want to make sure you use the rudder. They've get, not, not all planes have rudders, actually. Um, my 64 millimeter S16, for instance, does not have one, and it flies without it just fine. It flies better with one, but you can do it without. But you don't want to forget that the rudder is there, and you can use that to tr help turn the aircraft into a coordinated turn. So um, if we want to pitch the airplane up, what control surface does the pitching up? 
The elevators. And which one makes it go down? The elevators. You got it. Which one makes it yaw? Yaw is, so let's say the airplane's flying along and I want to fly it like that. Uh, what <laughs> what control surface is going to control yaw? The rudders. Yep, exactly. So it's not too difficult to uh, to understand, but if you it helps you if you think about this in advance, so you know what the surfaces are doing. And before we fly it, an airplane, we always make sure we check those out to make mm -hmm. sure that if you go right stick, you got right elevator comes up, left stick, you got the left elevator goes up or aileron goes up, mm -hmm. uh, pull back on the stick uh, for elevator. It, you know, you want to check all those out before. And we'll get into that a little bit more in a later episode, but you always want to check those things. Because if an airplane gets in the air and all of a sudden you realize that your ailerons aren't working, you're going to have a very, very bad day. Mm -hmm. So... All right, uh, that covers the, uh, actually, well, why don't we do a quick just uh, review here um, before we move on to the next subject matter, which is gonna be the transmitter. So I'm just gonna go over a couple more basics. So um, this, this orient, let's say, this movement here is known as what? Roll. Roll or bank. You can or go, bank. They're kind of interchangeable. Yep, mm -hmm. you're exactly right. And that's controlled by the ailerons. What is this motion here? Pitch. Pitch, and that is controlled by? The elevators. Yep. And we know the rudder does this, but what's that motion called? It's called yaw. Yaw. You got it. Exactly. And um, what makes the thrust on a prop plane? The throttle and the engine. And the propeller out front. That was kind of a trick one. But anyway, all right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move stuff around here a little bit. And we're going to talk about transmitters because an RC plane is a very cool thing sitting here on the ground, but without a transmitter, you're not going to be able to fly it. So. We're gonna go over what things in the transmitter do what on this aircraft. We're gonna move the Habu out of the way because it's a little big mm -hmm. to be doing this stuff. So we'll be back in one second. 